let's time the point between when she stops talking and when he starts talking. And we're going to do it on the slowest speed. All right. Let's see if we can come up with any type of time here. Fog. It could have been. Notice how she has to submit right here at the end, putting mm. up her hand saying, interesting point. She's doing this submission sandwich again to him. For both men and women. So, that is where I rest my case. Well, again. Oh, she didn't zero. Even stop. Literally zero. Oh my god. Literally zero seconds. Awesome. That is awesome. Notice how I noticed that because mm. I am listening to the woman speaking, unlike Ben, who is just waiting for <laughs> her to stop talking. This is the U.S. intelligence agency, Mind Control. You know, it's a really, really good, like, super Joining me on the movie. line is... The um, I think it's called Aces or Smoking Aces. Smoking Aces. Called. I think I have it, but I haven't seen it's it. I don't excellent. Think. I'm not sure. <laughs> maybe I have. Maybe I have it. Is there a scene basically in the beginning where a guy gets like mowed down by a scorpion machine gun? Machine Most pistol? likely, it's one of those movies. It's, it's like, like somebody the comes last... out of the elevator and like shoots a bunch of people with a scorpion gun. That's not the end, but no, it's no, no, like... it's like in the beginning. Sorry, I don't think that's at the beginning, but there's one scene where this guy has a 50 cal sniper across the across the way in Las Vegas, and he's just blasting guns with a 50 cal. I think they're the mob, it's though, awesome. right? Uh, it's it, they, there's like a contract, and the it, the whole story is that there's this contract, and like eight different it's groups are trying Hitman, to get the contract. Right? It's about yeah, yeah. Uh, and there's a scene, it's basically parodying almost Leon the Professional, where he comes out of the elevator, and he like yes. even says shh to a guy, and he's got a yes. scorpion yes. gun. Yes, yes. The CZ. I wasn't, I, I didn't take notice of the gun, but yeah. It's I, like, I it might even like be it. wrong. It might not even be a CZ, that's just how I remember it. Mm, I don't think it was. We'll check after this, because my internet certainly can't handle me opening the tab to check. <laughs> the incredibly wrong, Brett Cooper. <laughs> She, uh, she is the host of the wildly popular comments section and also a fan of both Greta Gerwig and the Barbie film. So, so Brett, I, I have to ask you, you're sitting there wearing, for those who can't see, a pink sweatshirt and a hat reading, Make America Hot Again. <laughs> and uh, I, have to, I have to ask you, you apparently... Terrible hat. Way too big for her head. <laughs> Still got the stylish headset. Honestly, uh, why would you make this hat and not make it a like a fit cap? You know, like this is like the weird abusive wino mom would wear this. Mm. Unironically, you know. <laughs> yes. Hilarious. He liked the Barbie movie. I. Enjoyed and so it. I'm wondering if maybe you saw another movie, but you thought it was the Barbie movie. <laughs> I did not. And you know what? And I watched your 43-minute review, and you made a lot of excellent points. And I told no, my no. audience no. that, and I told them that you made excellent points no. because you were right about the plot. It was not the greatest not about film the in terms of its construction at all. It was very, very messy. But you can't deny that it was fun. It was colorful. It was a great time. Oh, I, I, I know. Yeah, I as know. opposed I to every that. other movie I know, being deny it. gray. Do you like musicals, Ben? <laughs> do you like musicals? I love me. I do oh, love musicals. we talked about that. In fact, I know musicals. Yes, you and I have talked about this. I, I love musicals. But in order for a musical to, to be good, mm -hmm. it has to have more than more than one song, and that song has to be good. Mm -hmm. And the, the other song that they use is just a rip of a <laughs> 1990s rock song. That is true. I read about there are that. There's two songs. There's one that's like a rip of a 1990s rock song. And then there is a large scale musical number that is just basically rammed in. Sort of mm -hmm. like singing in the rain where they're like, we have this, we have to have a musical singing sequence. We're just going to ram this in here. Uh -huh. And so uh, they, they, they basically do that with the Ken dolls and all the Ken dolls are dancing around and in a song that, by the way, Brett, I, mm -hmm. I challenge you right now. You're, you're, you have a beautiful voice. Okay. You, you liked this. Yeah. Sing me the song. 
Um, the oh, one where it's um, um, Ken. Um, no, 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 Ken. I am Ken. That was basically all I remember. Oh, <laughs> right. So it's not a good song. But it was fun because um, if all it were a good I'm song, saying, you, could be, you could sing all it. All I am saying, she's then, seen it once. Is that I enjoyed watching it. It was silly. It was one of those films where I went in and I was worried about it because I had seen so many people be upset about it. And I was like, oh, OK, whatever. And you know what? They spent one hundred and fifty million dollars on advertising. And that advertising was great because, you know what? I was bought in. And I truly did think that it was like an escape in a lot of ways because it felt totally different than anything I'd seen in a while. It kind of reminded me of La La Land, which was objectively much better than Barbie. But in the same way that it was very you know, out of this world and colorful. And I think I had just missed seeing something that was bright on screen because you go and you watch movies and TV shows these days and every single one is dark. She's not wrong. Yes, she is, bro. Doctor Strange is like, everyone was talking about how colorful it was and shit. That, that is true. And Doctor Strange Spider-Man, is an excellent movie. The Doctor Strange is the, the best Marvel movie that has been made. <laughs> Literally, and it's the... been nothing but guys in bright, colorful tights. But all the, the surroundings are gray and sad and depressing. You're talking like it's shot like Capote. <laughs> Did you this, know Cap- the settings are Did you terrible. Know Capote specifically had a color palette that made you depressed. Oh, uh, really? Interesting. There's only there's only red in a few of the scenes, and one of them is like when he's reading his book. They have like three or four characters wearing red that are in the audience when he's reading the book. Interesting. That's another movie that's a masterpiece, right there. So it's not a terrible and movie. dreary and sad and depressing. And it was just nice to sit around people who were laughing and having a good time. My producers came with me. We were laughing our asses off the audience was so excited and it was like wow this felt really really cool like there was that one moment and i don't know if you'll get this part or not but they were joking about like the anxiety ridden barbies and they were talking about like the real world women and they were saying oh she's just lying in her bed watching the bbc adaptation of pride and prejudice which is my very favorite and objectively it is the best adaptation of pride and prejudice the entire audience filled with women burst into laughter and everybody was like slapping their boyfriends being like look it's me like i watched that and i think that that's just a very cool shared experience now regardless of whether the film is going to win any awards or whether it will be acclaimed because it really is not the most high quality film i think it was cool to be able to sit in an audience with a bunch of women who were just enjoying laughing at this because it did speak to a lot of very feminine things which i think is good in itself okay so that Okay, so a, a few things. One, yes, it's very colorful. The production yeah. design is the one thing about the movie. He needed notes. He did need notes. To come talk it, about this movie. It, it wasn't a CZ Scorpion. It was a shotgun. Where he comes out of the elevator? Yeah, and there's there, three of them. One of them any, throws two grenades. Is there any CZ Scorpion? <laughs> I didn't movie see that I said there. was good? Yep. Yeah, I mean, the production yeah, 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 fair, I did say in my review, like, at the very opener, <laughs> That the mm-hmm. production design is good, but also it's really hard to screw up a Barbie production design because literally the entire production design is Barbie. Are you, bro? Are you kidding I'm... me? The production design, like the 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 making it making it as pink as it was to like make you sick, right? Like yeah. they literally said that like they wanted people to like literally feel nauseous looking at how <laughs> pink it was. Like the production design, like. If they gave Suicide Squad an Oscar nomination for makeup, because this movie the should get makeup one, is really good in Suicide yeah. Squad. Actually, wait, the um, remake or the original one? The original bad one. Okay. Like uh, I think, uh, is it King Shark or Killer Croc? Uh, Killer Croc. Um, his his not CG. I'm pretty sure. Interesting. Um, let me Google that on my phone so I don't have to open up a tab. <laughs> Right? I mean, like it's just a big dollhouse. But, but put that, but put that, put that aside for a second. Um, the uh, there were to me about five laughs in the entire film, none provided by Will Ferrell, by the way, and none provided by Kate mm-hmm. McKinnon, one of the two comedians in the film. Um, and um, and and then I- the the makeup for Killer Croc took at least three point five hours to apply. Jesus Christ. The creation of the makeup design was taken over six months. Wow. So, okay. Yes, that was not CG. That was all makeup 
and he looks awesome. Am I right? He does. Yeah. So like, if they recognize that that deserved an Oscar nomination, Barbie better get a production design nomination. Like, I I am t- I tend to agree here. Like set design, amazing. And I think Ryan Gosling should get a um, supporting actor nod at least. We'll see. Like I said, I don't think they'll do anything like that because no. they're the Oscars. Obviously, the politics of the film mm-hmm. are completely screwed up. I know there's a bunch of now Straussian esoteric readings of the film <laughs> where Greta Gorwig is actually secretly conservative and she's actually critiquing feminism. Mm-hmm. What? But no. no. I mean, no. Ben, like Ben, you- Ben, Ben. It's Ocelanian. It's literally- we, should, we should email her and see if she's read it. <laughs> it's not something that you need Ashlan to come to the conclusion of, though. No, it's a logical conclusion. I mean, general general next wave feminism is kind of this like death to patriarchy type mm. thing, and it's and they think that like this. Well, not just them; many people think about it as in an ironic way, and don't recognize it as something that's like linked into capitalism mm. and enslavement and status it, the, the, the speech that america Ferrera gives about two-thirds off. of the way through. That's so- i cannot pause this every two seconds all right did you hear my lizard head butt the glass no cringy <laughs> in which bad. she explains how rough it is to be uh, it is the most cringy thing that has been put on screen for probably 10 years it's unbelievably cringy mm-hmm. And you know, the I, entire kind of my, notion my, that the patriarchy my, 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 my is guy. ruling all. So first mm-hmm. of all, female Ghostbusters exists. That entire movie was cringe. As the entire basis of the film is that the real world is a complete patriarchy, so magically patriarchal that mm-hmm. Ken learns from it and goes back to Barbie Land, where he yeah. then applies the. Yeah, he's also infested with the virus of patriarchy. Ben, Barbie liberates everyone from the patriarchy, including the men. Ben, men also at, get at, a good ending at her expense. In the Barbie too. movie, at her expense as well. Uh, crazy, right? Mm. Uh, crazy that they gave the men a good ending in the Barbie movie, <laughs> but it's not good enough for Ben. They didn't get equal rights. It's not woke enough. It doesn't have full <laughs> equality at the end. <laughs> I like my movies with perfect equality in the messaging and ending. Remember the Titans? Favorite movie. <laughs> Patriarchal standards of the real world mm-hmm. to Barbie land. And the only solution is that in it, it, to create paradise is that men and women must be separated from one another mm-hmm. and cannot actually no, have really. interactions. Now, I do no, think I that mean. Greta Gerwig can't actually hold this, this thesis. I'm fine... As long as it's you being separated from the women, Ben. <laughs> I agree. The thesis is unsupportable. Like the uh, the underlying message of the your film, thesis, ironically enough, is actually the thesis you made up is unsupportable. You mean Ben? Based based on the previews to the movie, in the movie that he Very definitely conservative in the sense that... scowling the entire time. <laughs> no, Ben, how could you have been watching that movie? When you were writing down like three full pages of notes instead of watching it, that everyone is deeply unhappy. Yeah, right. Barbie is deeply unhappy in Barbie Land. Ken is deeply unhappy in in Barbie Land. Everybody mm-hmm. is deeply unhappy in the real world. Everybody is deeply. Ken unhappy. is unhappy. There's no actual family in the film. Only does the only family is the. Yes, everyone and is Bobby... deeply unhappy. That's why this movie is totally a Buddhist utopia. The theme <laughs> is suffering. It's it's not it's about the it's about the realism of suffering, Ben. It is so far beyond your little feeble tiny brain, Ben. Your hey, brain is too medic. small to understand <laughs> how abstract and next level the concepts in fucking Barbie were. Like there was no that film has no business being as deep as it was. <laughs> yeah, but like that's what happens when you have like an art house director do something uh-huh. like that. You know, it's like um, it's not exactly comparable because he definitely isn't as good as a director. But when they gave James Guardians and it like came out as the perfect movie because like yeah. he's like a very like intelligent deep director. Mm. 
the mom and the theory. daughter. Yep. The mom is unhappy. The daughter is unhappy. And it's the dad is basically absent. He's there. He's in the film for literally right. five seconds. They can make a throwaway it's joke. Barbie, Barbie is probably one, the, probably one of the best movies I've seen in theaters, honestly. Interesting. Uh, you just have to be you just have to be intelligent and know film enough to understand why it's the best did you see often no not yet i will soon That's i also really i also good. already i also don't care it's gonna be people talking in a tiny room with non-linear editing like i fucking hate nolan so like <laughs> i'm not gonna like it i fucking hate christopher nolan like bro i always talk about how uh memento right if they he like couldn't get this couldn't get it funded because the story is just mediocre and stuff mm. so he got frustrated and he ripped up the script and then he was like oh hang on i can put it back together again but he, like <laughs> he couldn't remember the order it was put in and that's how that movie got created <laughs> like, that's pretty funny i i can't stand that non-linear shit like why can't oppenheimer just be linear and also you know like you know it's gonna be Nolan, so the fucking music is gonna be over blaring. <laughs> like the tenant, tenant could c- couldn't give a fuck about seeing it. Interesting. You know? I like the only thing I care about tenant is that it references when uh, Russia killed a bunch of civilians in a hostage crisis. He's Spanish. Yeah. And the final image of the film, which is Barbie going to the gynecologist because apparently she grew a vagina. Which I mean. First of all, super it's transphobic. So that apparently what made Barbie a woman was the growing of the vagina, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's literally what happens. The very end of the film. She- ben, mm-hmm. how do you know that? How do you know that she d- she didn't have a vagina before? <laughs> it's literally, it literally. If you're gonna read into it that much, it would be pro trans mm-hmm. because she got a vagina plasty. <laughs> she goes the, the end of the film is now, awful. What, it, it, it is terrible. No, it's not. Shut up, Brett. Okay, so yes. The- the the beginning of the film is, is terrible because if they wanted to make a true critique, here's the thing. You can't mm-hmm. make a true critique of Barbie, mm-hmm. except if you say that what Barbie actually is, is a... Com- it wasn't a critique of Barbie. Ben. It wasn't at all. Modification of femininity mm-hmm. and a reduction of femininity into the purely physical. And that requires you to then ask, okay, what else is what a woman besides... I don't understand what he's saying now. He's this just- is projection. This is all words. he does. I don't know what he's saying at all. I demand. And then the only answer to that would be, you know, like getting married and having kids. And that's the one thing they can't do because it's a very open How is this They throw worse? that away. Yeah. How is this worse, bro? Ugh! Bro. This he says, just talks out of his ass. The title of this video is I Have Questions. You haven't asked a question. You've just been angry at this girl. <laughs> this entire time. Going. Like, calm down. It's just a Barbie movie. <laughs> it's ben. a Barbie movie, dude. Chill. They smashed. The so, the, so the real question is, like, uh, uh, right? So the so the the real question is, what it what is the what are they saying that women are? Because at the end of the movie, Barbie goes from being pla- Pinocchio. She goes from being plastic Barbie to they're real not saying woman. anything. Well, what is real woman? And their they answer is know. a vagina. Well, they don't know. Super transphobic. No, no. Well, I think that they. And again, even if that was your reading, it would be pro trans because it would mean that she had a vaginoplasty. They don't know. And I think that was part of the. It was a joke for women, Ben. You know, it was it was a satire on like, oh, what is what's the thing that women do? Go to the gynecologist. You know, it's like, you know how Bridesmaids was made for women to be funny for women, Ben plot that felt not very thought out because it was all up and down and i absolutely agree with you that everybody was unhappy and that was one of the more endearing parts of the film for me because you know ken found that you know this patriarchy that he brought into barbie land or whatever was not actually fulfilling and that was not actually you know fixing anything you're in his so life. close Bar- you're so close right Barbie was not happy once she had seen the real world and had, you know, been restored matriarchy in Barbie land. And even after that had happened, she wasn't happy. Brett, you're so close. You're so close. Come on. I can't believe how close she is. She happy. almost gets it. And I think the most endearing part for me, even though the ending was way too long and the part with Ruth Handler, who's the creator of Barbie, was very, very weird. That white room was very, very odd. But I did think it was endearing that even after the perfect matriarchy in Barbie land. Bro. 
again, the theme is like how it's the death of childhood. That white room was her childhood, like going to the afterlife. It had been restored. Barbie then chose to go to the real world, which is apparently a patriarchy. And I think to me as a viewer, I looked at that and I went, oh, she's choosing like. She's choosing to advance women's role in the real world. Because she's also choosing to deal with the struggle of being human. Remember, like, when she meets the little girl and gets told she's a fascist, it introduces a new crisis in Barbie where she wants Barbie to be the thing, right? But you know how I actually wanted it to end? It, what, and, uh, it, where she walks in there and they say that her name is Margot Robbie and they break the fourth wall. Saying that, like, Margot Robbie was actually funny. Barbie who came to the real world. That would have been so fucking that, funny. That's what I thought it was going with, but it went with the gynecologist. What I think is fine is just kind of a lame joke to end on. I think the dad trying to do the Spanish was much funnier than the gynecologist bit, but the women in the theater thought that was really funny, and that's who it's actually made for. The human experience. So She's I can get choosing over to live in a world that maybe is not Unlike perfect. Them. Because our world is not perfect. And I thought that was interesting. I don't Are you eating spaghetti? Because I've been thinking about eating spaghetti this whole time. When I'm done here, the first thing I was going to do was make some spaghetti. I don't know what your take is on that. But I walked away from that even though I the am. ending would drag. Look at his face right now. He's tr he's a fucking dementor. He's trying to like suck her soul out. Yeah, he's, he's very not happy. Because she's actually Don making good points. And he's like, fuck. He's not listening. <laughs> He's not for listening at all. Way too long. <laughs> He's just like, I can't wait for this woman to stop talking so I can read my laptop notes. I left thinking, okay, maybe that was something that was kind of redeeming and that I he, this entire time she's been validating him by agreeing with him that the ending's been long, all this stuff. All she's doing is validating him. Just like how they kind of like do that thing at the end in the Barbie movie where they talk about how women need to do this to appease men and you got mad at that, Ben, and now you're doing the exact same thing with your That's employee. That's so fucking funny. And there's like not only a <laughs> patriarchy dynamic, but a power dynamic mm -hmm. going on here too. Weird. Yeah. So Good. weird. You know, appreciate. Also with the American Ferrara or America Ferrara speech, I watched that and it was so cringe and so contrived, but <laughs> which it was, but I don't think that everything that she said was wrong if you looked stop. at it just go. based on human. Brett, stop doing the sandwich compliment because a man can't handle being told your opinions <laughs> and the truth. Stop doing it. <laughs> stop proving the Barbie well, That's obviously not the correct. point that they were trying to yes. make, but as I was sitting there listening to it, I was thinking about both men and women listening to that speech and just talking about, you know, the complexities. Of How he keeps looking down at his computer. He's typing almost right right now. He's not listening to her. No. Of being human. Also, she's got her headphones on. She's going to have a direct line in, of his voice in her head and how you know you can't always get it right and it's hard to know oh he's got an ifb on for sure but mm. the right things to do when people have expectations for you and it just felt like a very human speech and it sucks that they made it all about women and said oh you know it's so hard to be a woman these are all the reasons why like, no, those are not the reasons why it's hard to be a woman those are just the reasons why it's hard to be a human being so i think they missed the mark on something oh my god stop talking stop oh talking. my god bro stop no, no, talking. She, she literally she did it she came to the correct conclusion that said they missed the mark on it because they didn't drive it home hard enough, I think. Of being human and how, you know, you can't always get it right. And it's hard to know the right things to do when people have expectations for you. And it just felt like a very human speech. And it sucks that they made it all about women and said, oh, you know, it's so hard to be a woman. These are all the reasons why. It's like, no, yeah, those are not, not the reasons why it's hard to be a woman. Those are just the reasons why it's hard to be a human being. So I think they missed the mark on something that could have actually no. been... Dude, she's so close. You missed the mark, Ben. <laughs> You're so close. In it's so it did not been a really cringe monologue. It could have been an interesting point for both men and women. So it that is. is where I rest my case well, again, on that the, monologue. The only solution. So, so here's my here's here's my big problem because yeah. everything is wrong. Okay, like I have been saying, how he can't wait to talk. Just mm -hmm. an experiment, right? I'm gonna turn this as slow as it can go. Yep. Let's time the point between when she stops talking and when he starts talking. And we're going to do it on the slowest speed. All right. Let's see if we can come up with any type of time here. Oh, it could have been. Notice how she has to submit right here at the end, putting mm. up her hand saying. Uh, An interesting point. She's 
doing this submission sandwich again to him. A poor both men and women. So that is where I rest my case. Well, again. That. Oh, she didn't zero. even stop. Literally zero. Oh my god. Literally zero seconds. Awesome. That is awesome. Notice how I noticed that because mm. I am listening to the woman speaking, unlike Ben, who is just waiting for her to stop talking. <laughs> the the only solution. So, so here's my here's here's my big problem. Because yeah. everything is refracted through the prism of of a secular feminist outlook, mm -hmm. everything in the movie is refracted through that prism. The obvious solutions that are available are completely put aside. I don't know, Ben. You're saying it's secular, but the theme of suffering seems pretty Buddhist to me. <laughs> she even reincarnated into like a real life after death too so right i mean the, the obvious solutions that are available which would be like you know barbie treating ken like a normal human and ken treating barbie wow, like a normal human it's almost human. like that's what is what happens did you miss it did you see the movie ben or were you busy writing in your notebook about how angry you are at the barbie movie Yes. That's completely put aside because he has to treat her like woman, and he ha and she has to treat him like man. But, but only they're in dolls, the feminist ben. outlook. They're, so, that's how Mattel created them. Yes, they're not the, actually humans. But if the idea is that, the, but, <laughs> but understood. But, but, but the, if the entire <laughs> idea is that these stereotypical Kens and stereotypical mm -hmm. Barbies are stand-ins for what men and women are actually like, they're mm -hmm. reductive. But they're stand-ins for what men and no, women no, no, are. No, 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 no. It's only stereotypical Barbie. It's Beach Ken. Actually, like then theoretically, the solution is for them to be what men and women have always been to one another, which are partners, mm -hmm. which they decide is not the solution, right? The end Everyone else gets together. Everyone else is kind of happy and smoochy at the end, Ben. Is that Barbie land ends up being maintained mm -hmm. by, by essentially subjugating the no. men, right? The men yeah. have to go back to subjugation no. in order for Barbie land to maintain. That is not what happened. It was a joke. It was a joke. Ben, it was a joke about how women are treated in the real world. It's almost like, you know, like it literally it goes between over the top and being like as plain as day where these jokes are and like somehow still missing them. That would make sense if they actually explained what the human experience is. Now, I think Greta Gerwig sort of what is fuck? trying to do that at the end. I think she's trying to buy back the entire what movie in that montage at the end. What do you mean movie? what the human experience is? The movie... <laughs> she's a doll, Ben. Bro, it's literally Pinocchio. He's said it multiple times. Too. Pinocchio, Pinocchio just barely understands being a real boy at the end. It's literally Pinocchio, Ben. Yeah, where it just shows a bunch of moms and daughters and like the human experience uh, and all of this, mm -hmm. which I think is frankly cheap filmmaking. Oh, I, I think God. that it is basically her at ben, the very end realizing she doesn't have any sort of message to the movie. That part made me of, cry. Uh, made me cry. <laughs> okay, because yeah, w w that's why it's cheap filmmaking because she I literally know. just gets a bunch of old home movies and she's like, "Look at the old lady," and the old lady is with it her made kids. Me cry. And that's what I, okay, I love that part. If you are, if you are, oh my God! If you are, oh, wow, Brett Cooper connected with the human moment. That literally is like the death of Barbie when she becomes human and it drives home the human connection between mother and daughter. Crazy that she would have a human emotion to cry at that point. Actually, I going didn't to feel make like crying, but you know, so crazy. Take that case, then the then the the film they should have just made yeah. is Enchanted. Mm -hmm. Right, that would be the actual plot of the yeah. film. The actual plot of the film I love that would be that Barbie too. doesn't like Ken. She goes to the real world. Mm -hmm. She goes to the real world and she falls in love with a real guy. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the real world has all of its problems. Oh, but there's a. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So you're you're saying the plot has to be Barbie falling in love? Why does why does partnership and love have to be anything to do with it? Why can't Barbie? You, you just, don't like, understand, John. Be a free, you, you don't woman? understand. Women must be subservient to men. What if what if it ended with her getting a cat? <laughs> <laughs> he'd be mad and comparing her to no, Taylor he, Swift. <laughs> he would be like, and that's what happens when you choose to be away from men. You become a weird cat lady. <laughs> She's weird, Barbie, and gets a cat at the end. Real guy there who she wants to be with and have, have kids with, right? And now it'd actually be a plot to the movie. Instead, we have no idea why she chooses to go back to so the real world. you're mad because she doesn't want to go to the real world and have babies. Why do you think she's seeing the gynecologist, Ben? <laughs> Like, what, what is the reason? 
What is the reason? Like, apparently, I think that, she does have the feelings in Barbie World, by the way. Yes. She still has the feelings. The reason feeling. is death of childhood, Ben. Things, right? Yes. She, when she goes back to Barbie World, she doesn't lose the feelings. She still has them. Well, I think she's So what's so great about taste. the real world? We never... We, death of Well, I think what's great about the real world is it. that she has this... Well, she started... In, uh, I mean, I think there can, there can be innocent adults, but yeah, sure. Beginning of the film, you know, having thoughts of death, and she gets out of this out of the Barbie box, basically. And where you only think about being Barbie and beach. <laughs> and all- Elizabeth Lauren is an, is an innocent person, is who I described as a naive, you know? <laughs> like, she's not aware of the evil of the world, mm. that type of innocence. Sure. That's more of what I see, is the death of innocence comes with, like, understanding that evil exists. Barbie doesn't get into evil, good and evil. No. They... they do one genocide joke but they don't really get into like beyond the good and evil Joel, that's fair so it really is just about mom and daughter so mm. uh that's why i would sure. argue okay childhood sure but innocence yeah. works too yeah all of that stuff and she realizes the beauty of being human is being able to feel the wide range of human emotions and being able to have all of these more meaningful connections with yes. people like America Ferrara, even though that's kind of a, a weird dynamic, but she gets to see what this mother-daughter relationship looks like. She is interacting with real she, people. She also is understanding that when you choose to make these types of connections with people, that you open yourself up for more suffering later and chooses not to be afraid of that. On a totally different Very level Buddhist than she was interacting concept. with people in Barbie land. She's crying for the first time, which is just a funny scene, but you know. She cries through the whole movie. When she turns to that old woman and says, you're so beautiful. She's never seen an old woman before. And it what obviously do you mean, is- What very- Crying for the first time? She cried through the whole movie. Ugh. Also, very symbolic, wait, wait, wait. but I think that she's that, getting a taste of what it means. Where she sees the old lady and her response is, I know it, made me fucking cackle. <laughs> oh no, she's at the bus stop. I thought she was talking about it with Ruth at the end. Is that, that No, she's talking first, about the right? lady at the bus stop. I'm sorry, Brett, you're right. Means to be human, to not live in these, you know, comical extremes. I don't know, that's my take on it. Right, the, the, but again... Again had to submit at the end with the i don't know that's my take on it you're doing the you're doing the thing the barbie movie called out honey mm-hmm. the, the problem that i have with the solution because mm-hmm. I, I think Pays that you are right love. that is what greta Gerwig wants to he do mm-hmm. the problem with the solution is that it's not actually a solution for any of her problems yep how does she solve the irrepressible threat of death by going to the gynecologist the answer is she doesn't I, I know the, that the ending, is, like I said, it was how, such how a she, throwaway. It was a throwaway. I we agree. Can agree the on joke that. is a throwaway at the end, but it's literally like a scene that you would put after the credits anyway, right? It would have yes. been fine if they did it like as an after the credits mm-hmm. plug, which is yeah. probably what it was originally written and intended as because that's what Mattel wanted because that's what needs to be in the formula. And it, it was good enough that they just put it right at the end. It's it's literally an epilogue scene. You don't need it in the movie whatsoever. It's just there to give you a little bit of extra movie. It could be cut. Who cares? That the ending was terrible. Right. And it, 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 it ruined. thinks that like it has to, whatever the last frame of a movie is, is like what the conclusion of the movie has to be. He doesn't understand what an epilogue is. He's an idiot. <laughs> And any important well, she's meaning. also saying the ending is bad too because it ends like that. She doesn't understand an epilogue either. Painful point that she was attempting to make. Right. And it, you it, also it, haven't asked questions. You can't title your video "I Have Questions" and then just sit here and berate a woman and be mad that she liked a movie. It's like even if she were trying to go for the thing, she is mm-hmm. forbidden by the by the strictures of secular feminism from going for the thing. Mm-hmm. Right, she's forbidden the things that actually. Here's the thing: the entire movie is about having an irrepressible fear question. of death. Yeah. Okay, so the, the the problem with the entire movie being about that is that you then have to have a solution to that. Mm-hmm. If the problem of the you movie he's doing? has irrepressible thoughts of death, you know how in the movie uh, the the thing is that they'll over-explain their favorite thing. That's what Ben's doing. He's doing the thing. <laughs> he's and presumably, doing it. the answer to irrepressible thoughts of death is some sort of spiritual solution or familial solution. Almost like that there is a spiritual solution in there and it's Buddhism. Or something. 
Uh, right? There has to be an actual solution that is posed. I mean, it's literally yeah. the problem of the film. And the, and the, and that the that solution is, is to embrace suffering because it yes. is inevitable. Yeah, it's what they say. There's a great book called the, Den the Denial of Death from the 1970s talking about how basically all human beings are driven by the denial of death, right? That we, mm -hmm. we just move every day in opposition to death. So we create heroic narratives about ourselves and things that we do to distract ourselves. And we have religious experiences and all, all human beings, except for Buddhists, because that's literally like the whole point of Buddhism is that death exists and it's fine. All this. But they don't even actually present any of that for Barbie. Uh -huh. And so the. Yeah, they don't because it's it's got Buddhist undertones. But not Western. Problem is that the, <laughs> they the problem would. posed is too big would. for the solution. Mm -hmm. Right. The, they, like, and so if you're going to do that, would never. The th Look how mad he is that he got He's so mad that she spoke over him. He looks straight down and fucking angry at Dude, he had to literally restrain himself from yelling at a woman who mm -hmm. interrupted him. Go back. Right. I want to say they, that. Like, and so if you're going to do that, would never. And the th <laughs> right. So if you're going to present the problem as irrepressible thoughts of death, then the answer that you and I would give as, as conservatives and religious people, theoretically, mm -hmm. would be probably church, family, right? Yeah. These would be like the, the answers to irrepressible fear of death is the way you overcome that. not Buddhist answers, Ben. Only Judeo-Christian answers, right? It's got to be it's got to be your world or nothing, huh? Is by progenerating and having children and grandchildren uh -huh. mm -hmm. right it's not by being an old lady sitting on a park bench it's by being an old lady Was who the has theme of motherhood not enough for you like that was like not. was the central theme being motherhood not enough for you ben no it's not because it's not about fatherhood and sons he That's no but he problem. doesn't care that the dad is pointless at the end he cares that it's a gynecologist joke at the end that's his <laughs> issue not that the dad is worthless grandchildren sitting on your porch sitting next to the grandpa Bro, and you literally were just talking about a scene where it shows generations of film watching yeah. as you progenerate into the future it, right, like, does, it literally does this ben that would actually what that that's the that's the part that that i feel like she she, she created a box for herself mm -hmm. and because she was because that box was secular feminism there was no way to escape it just on an ideological level and so yeah. the movie bounces ben, around the movie is about the mother and daughter Barbie is a doll. She's just a thing. She's an accessory to the plot. The plot is about a mother and daughter reconnecting, Ben. Barbie is literally a second ca secondary character in her own movie. <laughs> around there. And yeah. then once because it's bouncing around there and because she feels she has to say all these dumb things about the patriarchy and how men rule the world and, and all of this kind of nonsense, like it for all of that I found obviously incredibly annoying because mm -hmm. I think they, they didn't even... I get angry at lazy. I, I really get yes. angry at lazy. And this is a lazy film. You're it's lazy, a lazy, lazy you idiot. Movie. They don't even bother to do basic exposition of what drives characters. Bro, mm -hmm. lazy, the amount of Barbie history in there alone is like mm -hmm. insane. The, ins the insane amount of prep it must have took just researching Barbie alone that is, is evident in the film. And like me... Not even being like a fan of Barbie, just knowing that Barbie exists and knowing enough about like women and culture and and like you know how iconic the toy has been. So Barbie is driven by something, but we're not quite sure. She has irrepressible threats, uh, feelings, uh, you know, feelings about death. And remember when Barbie's emotions are imprinted on her by the mother. But that's supposed to be cured by her seeing America Ferrera, right? I mean, that's mm -hmm. the whole idea at the beginning. She's going to go there. She's going to rectify. She's going to go back to Barbie land and all the rest. And then she sort of gives up randomly two thirds of the way through the film. Mm -hmm. What what drives again? My my biggest plot hole is the most obvious plot hole in the entire film, mm -hmm. which is Ken takes over. He creates Kendom, and for some reason decides to have a popular referendum okay. on whether or not to take over. If it's a fascist patriarchy, why is there a vote? Yes. If you come back in and you seize all power, why are you then providing for a vote oh, with God, 48 hours notice? That. That's funny. That is true. Okay. It ben, because of the Constitution, Ben, the co they couldn't throw out the because this would happen in America too. The Constitution would block block people from doing this if this theoretically happened in America. You would need to, you couldn't just, you can't just have a fascist takeover. The Constitution exists. Isn't he a constitutionalist? Yeah, but constitutions, haven't you heard my rants about they're all fucking idiots? Because, <laughs> because
as the constitute the two points. Okay, you tell me the two main points of forming of writing the constitution. Do you know what they are? To prevent government and something else? Nope. Point number no one, idea. to take power away from the states and centralize it. Mm -hmm. Point number two, the ability to tax those states. Okay. That's why the Constitution is created. Death and to taxes. tax states and centralize power. Literally, the one thing that these constitutionalists say that they hate. Also, they refuse to notice that the very beginning of the Constitution, before freedoms are mentioned, it says that the Constitution's purpose is to promote the general welfare of society. They ignore that. Interesting. It's it, it's it's idiotic. It makes sorry. It's speaking. The, the biggest, by the way, my biggest, uh, the, my my other biggest critique. The Will Ferrell character makes no sense. They just okay. were like, "What if we just oh Will Ferrell will come and he will do the, the elf routine? And he'll yeah, just do that shit. for like twenty minutes, and it'll be totally unfunny." Mm -hmm. But he'll hit he, his motivations make no sense. None of the motivations make any sense. Like no, the part those that drove characters me crazy. were it's not just just literally need the movie yeah. to fucking ben, spell it out for him. Ben, children's stories don't make sense. Have you heard a child tell a story, Ben? I guarantee you a child would say dumb shit because they know it like they've heard the Constitution in social studies class. They would say dumb shit like this. Mm -hmm. Regardless, it doesn't fucking matter. Yep. I was going to say, those characters just felt like they were dropped in there and they were attempting like, to make a The whole amendment and Constitution and stuff, like, nobody gave a fuck about any of that. It's such secondary like, narrative stuff of jokes i did like that one speech where they were it wasn't even a speech but where they were trying to be as woke as possible like those because they were you know the men running the female doll company and they were trying to you know be up to date on the current thing and the progressive thing that made me laugh because it's just normal you know corporations like every pride month basically that's what oh they do oh my god yes you're, yes you're correct ironically you're correct but just you know somehow also weirdly giving me incorrect vibes because of the conclusion you're coming to it's just capitalism it's a, it's a it's a joke about how capitalism is and so that made me chuckle a bit but other than that it felt like he didn't i mean he didn't offer anything to the film he was just there and it was kind of like a funny montage of well, him I mean, trying to get to barbie land but other than the, that the entire i mean th this goes again uh, ironically the thing that upset about the film was not actually the politics because i assume mm -hmm. every every left-wing film is going to be left-wing mm -hmm. uh, the 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 thing that upset me about the film is that it was a waste of my time like do not be so lazy as writers like the, the, the ben it was not a waste of your time you have gotten millions of views off of your Barbie content already. You are literally making your money back on this by a lot, right? Your profit margin is way higher than the Barbie movies right now because he probably spent what? Like he brought, went with a bunch of producers. So it's probably maybe, let's say $100 altogether you spent on that Barbie movie. You have made far more than $100 off of the Barbie movie. So... In theory, no, it's impossible for you to have wasted your time watching this movie. You are profiting <laughs> from it. You are a liar. Ironically, the thing that upset me about the film was not actually the politics, because I assume mm -hmm. every every left wing film is going to be left wing. Mm -hmm. uh, the 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 thing that upset me about the film is that it was a waste of my time. Like, do not be so lazy as writers. Like the the mm -hmm. the, the the plotting made me absolutely insane. Insane. I mean, the fact that. They, they go to the real world. And now mm. we're told by the Mattel Corporation, this is a crisis. Why is this a crisis? Will Ferrell says something unthinkable will happen. They don't say what it is. And then what is the unthinkable thing? And they're like, we won't even explain it. We'll because just, it's unthinkable. Know, something unthinkable. Okay, so now you're just being lazy. Mm. Now you're just being incredibly lazy. Will Ferrell, his character, who's supposed to be driving the plot, right? Because he is the plot device by which they're attempting to capture Barbie and Ken gets to go back. And then they have to, mm. for some reason, they follow them into Barbie land and all of the rest of this. His, his character goes something like this. I am a man, I run a female-led corporation, and the women have to be put back here. in the box, literally. Mm -hmm. Literally, we have to put the woman back in the box because we're all we care about is profit. Yes. Then he's told that the Ken doll is going to outsell the Barbie doll. Mm -hmm. And he says, no, actually, we are the Barbie corporation. I have to stand up for women. And he makes that flip inside of five seconds. And you're like, well, hold up. Are you the emblem of evil capitalism like in the mm -hmm. Lego movie? Or are you like an actual feminist? What's the deal? And, and this sort of divide runs all the way through the film, let's talk about who you trust. It, you shouldn't trust big tech with your data. It's just a dumb thing to do. Shut up, Ben. It's just a dumb just... thing. No, no. Give me your data I... instead. A daily 20, 20 minutes in, has he asked a question? I, love... I, I stopped. 
waiting to see if he was asking a question. Honestly, I got <laughs> sidetracked. Wildly overrated. Oh, again, as like a I young woman. I didn't hate. <laughs> I love. That I didn't movie. hate Lady Bird. I didn't hate Lady Bird. I and, also and, love. And, and at the very end, again, Greta. Greta tries. To, Greta Gerwig does try to buy mm. back some religion. Again, the the out to Lady Bird is the one she doesn't use in Barbie. Mm-hmm. Right, the out the to Lady Bird side, is at yeah. the very end. The girl, right? The girl mm-hmm. realizes. It's almost like this director has a theme with ending on different religious concepts, Ben. And you didn't, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> nothing about Eastern <laughs> religions, so you missed it. Is that the value system that she has been pursuing is actually not the right value system? And she goes to church and yep. she calls her mother. She right? goes That's the back very end to of her the Catholic film. upbringing. So yes. she actually. And yes, I also, she, and I also she, enjoyed. Or at least to a religious background, right? I also enjoyed Frances Ha, which she and her husband did together. And I think that I also enjoyed her um, her adaptation of Little Women. I think that the older one was better, but I do love, and I said this at the beginning of my review, I just enjoy Greta Gerwig in general. Like, I remember sitting at a SAG, um, you're going to hate this, Ben. I was sitting at a What's SAG Q&A, uh, it was some director circle <laughs> with Greta Gerwig, and I was so inspired that I went home and I wrote her a letter, like, thanking her for Lady Bird, because I loved the movie. <laughs> Okay, so you're you're a fangirl for Greta Gorick. This is not a I fair am, conversation. I am, but I will. Like, okay, so f- I am. That's why I said at the beginning of my review is that I just I like her in general. But I will say I do not want this. To- is not a fair conversation. Is what he just said to you. Now he's the oppressed man. Are you Ken now? To see what she's going to do with the Chronicles of Narnia because she's doing the adaptation. She's okay. going to absolutely Ooh. right butcher that and it's interesting because she keeps having these i just want to know about her upbringing in a way because she keeps kind of dropping in these religious themes and these more spiritual questions and then never really answering them and it feels like she almost like spirituality and religion don't provide answers herself greta is grappling with a lot of this. I don't know how she's she was a, brought up. She's a lapsed. She's a lapsed Catholic. She's yeah. a lapsed Catholic. She was raised Catholic, mm-hmm. is my understanding. Okay, and then she oh, dropped so away from the church, spir- mm-hmm. and so she's in search of a value system uh, that's pretty clear in her work. Yeah, right, is that she's constantly she's in search of a value system. So Lady Bird is really about her. I mean, it's about her. I, I, she, sorry, she was not raised Catholic. Each religion. Okay, so we figured out why, and you still can't fucking figure it out. You are a moron. You she wasn't. She wasn't. I, I believe she was a Presbyterian good. who went to a Catholic high school. So that, okay. that story is really about her. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the the sort of thing that she is searching for is the thing that she has forbidden from herself, which is yep. to take religion seriously enough to actually take it seriously. Mm-hmm. And so I, that, that's why I think the C.S. Lewis adaptation is going to be a disaster area because yep. the thing that C.S. Lewis is calling for you to do <laughs> in Lion, Witch, and Wardrobe yep. is to be a Christian. Yes. That is what the book is about. It and so her is. actually adapting that, like I, I don't, I don't see how she's going to adapt that. I mean, there's a lot of critiques of that in Little Women. right. The Chronicles of Narnia is undertone a religious book. I know this because the evangelicals I went to Catholic school with were allowed to read that, but not Harry Potter. <laughs> Too, is, that, mm-hmm. is that there's some Christian and you got a thematic lot of them. I love in Little Women that actually gets kind of ripped out by, by, by Greta Gerwig. Um, well, she makes so, it much more girl again, bossy I, than the books actually were, which is unfortunate. I love the right the actors in it. I thought it was great, but there was a lot. So, and that usually happens when books are adapted into movies. You lose a lot of those deeper meanings, which is unfortunate. But especially the when they're yes, exactly. But I really think that's going to happen what, with Chronicles of Narnia. Well, I mean, again, what, what's fascinating about Gerwig just as a, as a director and as a writer is that she knows enough to ask some of the right questions, but she is forbidden from answering them in any proper way. Mm-hmm. Right, like, so yeah. th- th- that, that's, that's the thing that's actually interesting about the Barbie movie. I will say that, that from, I think it fails because of this. I think, mm-hmm. it, like, on an ideological level, I think it fails because of this, as I said. I think when you set up the it problem, you're pressing... because I don't know what boot is, is okay. Well, fear of death. And then your solution just doesn't exist. Like, you're... Ben, she literally, like, chooses death at the end like she embraces the concept of mortality at the end like she could have lived forever she could literally could have chose heaven and she walked away from it come on dude your solution is sort of secular rote feminism no and everybody's unhappy like i think that she's actually she's almost critiquing her own worldview unconsciously i don't think she meant to do it 
right? There are some people who are doing a Straussian reading where she meant to do this, and that when you watch it, what you're actually meant to take away is that feminism I think is a failure of it, and that we actually need is to get married. I, I was going to say, I, I was about to say, I think most of it is an adaptation. No, I think most of it is an accident that inadvertently she was dropping yes. these things. They're not understanding it. Um, okay, one question the, I have. Have you heard pain. this is going on on Twitter right now? <laughs> this of is horrible. The inadvertently dropping these things and she didn't realize it, bro. Ugh. This the is, amount this of is deliberate so tones. Neo conservatism i'm so okay. shocked i thought this is gonna be funnier the <laughs> the fact that this is the worst and most <laughs> the peak suffering and <laughs> servitism is this the people who are very into the kingdom is yes that, is they that are a question hey 30 minutes in 25 oh, they, minutes there's in. all these men well, that's the first one i kept track of i'm sure he asked one in the beginning i'm just maybe if i care i'll look at it in the edit and i'll put up a count here. oh no he asked a, a rhetorical question of oh so you're a fan <laughs> well, i'll count any type of thing that i can put a question mark on put and a if counter i care on. enough in the edit i'll put a counter on <laughs> who suddenly feel seen by ken and, and they're like questions asked you know, and then every time a question is asked. This is it. This is me as a Western man being so beaten down by women. This isn't an ideal world. This is what I would do. This is my story. And they're painting him as this Greek tragic hero. And, you know, the tragic hero, you know, commits all, does all these wrong things, but has no real ill intent because he just doesn't understand. And so he obviously has some moral standing obviously created destruction and it's all of these guys on twitter and i'm not kidding last night there were so many of these threats and they're like the ken uprising and they feel like ryan gosling is speaking to him also something that is very funny is that this was you know they were trying to create this feminist no. movie all of this stuff the only character that people are talking no. about also in left-wing circles is ken they love ryan gosling I have not seen one Twitter thread, one article about how amazing Margot Robbie is, and she's stunning and she's great. But the Barbie character, Margot Robbie was amazing, but the story highlighted <laughs> Ken as the main story protagonist. <laughs> yeah, it did though. Like Ken has the Ken is the one who gets the character transformation. You know, like come on, y'all are like circling the drain. Was flat, like the most endearing character. Number one, I liked America Ferrara and that and the daughter character just because I like mother daughter relationships portrayed in movies and TV. I think that just comes from being a young okay, woman. But we're not. But Ben just said that there's no none of that in this movie. He's so close. But also, I just She's loved so Ryan Gosling. Close. I loved Ken. He was so <sighs> endearing, and I think it's funny that in this feminist Barbie movie, you mean the, he was Knuff? Feminist. Say that he was Knuff. <laughs> Male character is actually who people enjoy. I bet so none of them noticed. Me oh yeah, no, for, for sure that's <laughs> like, true. Barbie is literally like the straight character almost. Like mm. Barbie is like Barbie is, is like the like most underwritten character in so many ways. But that's what she she needed to for do. sure. That's true. I mean, yes, because because yeah. it's like a separate thing. Because you know, normally you write your main character to be like blank, so people can imagine her. Yeah. But like this is kind of like everyone could attach to Barbie like memories of yeah. Barbie. You know, so she's still acting in a, a vessel for the audience in that way. Mm -hmm. But the secondary characters, which is when shit is really good, is when the secondary characters have the most transformation. Yeah. I mean, one of my critiques of the film also is that... Like, Lord of the Rings, does Frodo really change by the end of the movie? Does Sam really change by the end of the movie? Not really. The, the Is that when Ken comes back... But Aragorn... Yeah. Major character transformation. Yeah. So first of all, the, the all the Barbies are supposed to, Ken's supposed to be an idiot, right? All the yeah. Barbies are like on the Barbie Supreme Court and arguing Citizens United and all this kind of stuff. Ken takes over that place in five seconds flat. Yeah. Right? And in five seconds flat, he walks in and suddenly it's Ken dumb. This that is pretty much the only thing they explained was why. Over all of the matriarchy in one second. <laughs> Dude, One rule, second ben. with no actual Dude's compulsion. Rule. Right. Apparently, we're amazing at everything. We're so good at it that we can we can mind warp Greta Gerwig to have yeah. the men take over the Barbie land mm -hmm. in one second flat. And apparently, my, I will say that again. I think all of these things are actually the only thing happy is that you all of the Barbies enjoying the the patriarchy. Yeah, 
is one of the best things about the film. It's very right? All the Barbies for a hot second are like, this is actually kind of nice. Like we like we're, yeah. we're cheerleaders and like we're bringing men food and we're kind of enjoying ourselves. And they actually have to be informed by mm -hmm. weird Barbie and company yep. that actually they're miserable. That's such which a is kind of funny. Of the, yeah. I mean, first of all, it assumes that subservient needed to be informed, like the Kens were informed that there are different ways Whoa, to do you things. You mean they read Ashalon? <laughs> And they realize that the patriarchy <laughs> exists to enslave women. Fucking hell. How dope would it be if they actually like pulled out an Ashalon book? <laughs> it would be awesome. Okay. It's super weird. It's, it's, it's suggesting women have no agency, really, right? Mm -hmm. they, have to be, they have to be told by the, by the feminists that they're miserable. Mm -hmm. Like, until then, they were... Ha by, by the way, that, that, that kingdom mm -hmm. doesn't even include the part of the... Because it can't. It doesn't even include the part of the patriarchy that the feminists actually say is part of the patriarchy, which is childbearing. Yep. Right? Because the truth is that a thing that women like to do, historically speaking, is have babies yes. and raise them. So historically, women like to die. <laughs> ben, do you know... Do you know... Why prostitution is is such an old and great profession? It's not because men are perverts. It's because women died in childbirth, right? And so, like, instead of choosing to die and get pregnant, women were just okay with their husbands going out and seeing prostitutes because they wouldn't risk their lives and die, you know, because they had children to take care of. So women couldn't even be free, you know, until like contraception started to exist, right? And that's when we actually see like Victorian values crack down because women could actually be, you know, you see it nowadays, like they're blaming everything. Jordan Peterson blames everything on the fact that women can actually not die in childbirth. You know, that's literally like Jordan P Theater Peterson's like entire really? thesis. I mean, yeah, he talks about how like women have a choice now and aren't subservient to men. That's literally his. And that's why men are sad is what he's saying is because women have a choice uh, and they can have sex with who they want. Right. That's his entire thing. Fucking hell. He's them. Yes. I know. I'm married to a doctor wife and we have four uh. of them. He's <laughs> And somehow I didn't know. So it's a thing that women are into. Either. And the women are into. We have four kids together. <laughs> the patriarchy, even without the babies. So that, mm -hmm. that, like, again, I think that Gerwig, because I think she is a conflicted person, mm -hmm. is operating. I'd be fascinated to find out which parts of the script Noah Baumbach wrote and which parts of the script mm -hmm. Greta Gerwig wrote, actually. I think it'd be really, really interesting to find because they co wrote the script. Yeah. I would bet you, and this is not to stand for, for, Greta Gerwig, because okay. again, I'm not a huge fan, but the, the, certainly not to your extent. <laughs> I would bet money that the worst parts of the script were actually not written by Greta Gerwig. Yep. I would bet you the worst parts of the script were almost universally written by, by Noah Baumbach. Interesting. That's a, that's a really interesting take, especially just because of her track record of struggling with these questions. And obviously, they I were in there. The other thing with the Ken and Barbie relationship that you just talked about, where the women had to be informed, that also makes me laugh because that's basically what happened with feminism in our world like women were very happy and it took other women to come to them <laughs> and say they? no you are actually <laughs> were they though wait, wait until wait until they realize that these patriarchal concepts that are keeping men sad are things that you need to be awakened from <laughs> and then you'll actually start feel, be, feeling better like you're actually sad from the patriarchy ken God. ken was incomplete you know that was kind of the point mm-hmm very very miserable so once again i think it's an accident where i was kind of laughing at it because i like, just realized this is not a fish this is a, like a statue head back here i thought this was a fish and now i'm looking at it and being like how did i ever think this was a fish <laughs> hey yes this is exactly what happened that i chuckle at it because it's so obvious that even though to me, it is obvious that this is could be a commentary on our world. I'm sure she was not intending it that oh, way. Come on. Because she thinks that she's actually saving these women, which of course is what feminists actually think. So come I think you on. can spin it a hundred different ways, but there were a lot of, as you say, happy accidents in there that definitely come made it on. more enjoyable because the movie was chaotic. There were obvious plot holes. But oh, yeah. it was it's silly. A mess. It's a mess. But and it was silly and it was fun. And my it, point it, in doing my review was that I had a lot of women writing to me saying, like, I feel really bad because you I tell me the you tell me, you tell me where Stanley Kubrick explains his fucking movies in his movies. <laughs> you tell me.
when it happens. You want to know when it happens? There's one point when it happens, and it's not that he's explaining his movie. He's explaining Stephen King's book. And it's when the guy explains what Shining is in The Shining. Yes. That's when it happens. But even then, that was him explaining a Stephen King concept, not something that was a Kubrick concept. Interesting. I enjoyed seeing it. I was like, you don't have to feel bad about enjoying a fun movie. Like, there obviously have been better movies, and, you know, Oppenheimer is probably much better. I'm seeing that this week. But you don't need to feel bad for enjoying a fun movie and enjoying shirtless Ryan Gosling doing a dance number. Okay, so two things. Okay, so I'm not going to talk about that. Two, two final, <laughs> two, two final points. I want to get your your comment on. Okay. Uh, apparently, it. I, uh, first of all, <laughs> apparently, I, 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 two final points. You want to get her comment on, or two questions? Because the name of the video is that you have questions for her. Apparently, um, un- unconsciously even dressed mm-hmm. like Ken. So this is a thing. But it, 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 that, that was that was the meme that was going around. Is that yes. I was wearing the Ken you outfit. Are. It's a black jeans and black shirt, guys. That like that's your Halloween okay. costume. You already figured it out. Uh, the uh, Exactly. We're done. Um, so the, the, so two things that I yeah. want to get your take on, cause these actually, I think are, are fairly, but one, they're, they're kind of the same critique. Mm-hmm. Who is this movie aimed Question. at? Hey, we got one. Let's it see. It's aimed at young women. Mm-hmm. Again, I think the messaging is wrong, but okay. But it's aimed at me, Ben. Me is what she should say. One of my problems is that when I, I went to the theater, that. there were moms bringing like their eight year old girls. Really? This is not. An appropriate movie for kids who are under 14, 15 years old, minimum. No, it's not, not your kids, it's not your fucking problem, Ben. Shut the ben, fuck up. Ben, it's it's almost like it's rated PG thirteen. <laughs> uh, um, right? It's just not. I mean, I, it's, I did it, not it, it's see got a it. bunch of jokes and references. Yep. Yeah, I did not think that it was marketed towards young people, but I am also like children. But I also am not fed that kind of marketing. I don't have kids. I'm not eight years old. I'm not on that you know, part of the internet. All of the marketing that I saw, the right. advertising that I saw, the people who were talking about it were all women ages 21 to 30, I would say. Yep. People who use the internet. And 28-year-old males like me. <laughs> that seemed like the right. target now, the, audience. The reason that I say that is because Dude, of the preview. I, I was just really happy for all the girls being so excited about this movie it made me feel good uh, uh, like seeing how many women were so excited to like mm-hmm. have something for once yeah is the reason i say that is because the what what so let me ask you this what mm-hmm. previews were before the barbie movie another they question did not offer a lot of the plot it was very very hidden it was just colorful fun Jumping up and down. No, I'm not asking. I'm not asking about the previews of Barbie, right? So I'm oh, not asking about the, oh, the, the previews, previews of Barbie. I'm asking when you went to see the Barbie movie. What were the previews that came before? Oh my gosh! Why is the only so one I remember is Trolls because I have a couple of friends that love the movie Trolls. And right. Trolls too. You hear that, Ben? She has friends who even like that movie, so therefore it was nailing the target audience because <laughs> she was in the audience. You, you you just got your point owned by Brett Cooper, and you're gonna act like she's proving it, even though she just dismantled it without intending to. <laughs> right. So, so, you, so so so, I'm sure you saw the same trailer reel that I did because yeah. all the trailers were driven at children, all all of them. Right? It was Trolls three. That is such a good and point. And it was ben. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Right, so they, they they're clearly mar- like they think that this market is for twenty five year old moms mm-hmm. and six year old daughters, or, or rather thirty now thirty five year old moms and six year old daughters. But uh, to and, play uh, devil's and advocate, th- that is. Don't the trailers also? Aren't they always ones that are like owned by the company distributing? Pretty much, the movie? yeah. Pretty much. To to play devil's advocate, do you think they ran that trailer reel because they? knew that regardless of how they marketed it, regardless of them saying this is PG-13 and them saying, you know, I mean, it's... Because I, I watched an interview with Greta Gerwig and Margot Robbie and they were talking about how, you know, they created this for women and they were asked if kids could go see it and they're like, I don't really think that they'll understand it. Do you think that they were worried, like the th- that the theaters were worried that Not moms were going to bring their daughters it. and so they went ahead and just made it family friendly? Like, I don't know if I would put that on the production team. I would put that more on audiences wanting to bring their daughters to a Barbie movie. Right, so I'm I'm not sure who makes the call as yeah. to which previews go before which movie. I assume the studio has to sign off on mm-hmm. which previews go before a movie. Like if you're if you're showing a G-rated movie, you don't want Oppenheimer being your exactly. lead. So I assume that uh, I, I assume that that somebody is approving that. Uh, the point I'm making is that 
think that Pretty this was mismarketed out. in the mm-hmm. sense that it, not not in terms of the success. Obviously, it's the, it's the greatest marketing campaign I've ever seen by yeah. far. It's not it's not close. Um, but in terms of the the sort of what was marketed, the preview is Enchanted, and then the delivery is a feminist screed. <laughs> and so there is that gap, mm-hmm. and that includes the fact that there is in fact a man playing a woman as a Barbie. Yeah, and this. They fly over, you know, a bunch of the kids who are in the audience because, again, it's a man who's had many, many surgeries mm-hmm. and is wearing a lot of makeup and, and all the rest of this. So it may be that they just don't. It's wow. Crazy. You mean you have to explain how to be transphobic to kids, Ben? Is that what you mean? Crazy. Oh, Notice that mm-hmm. it's a man who's playing a woman, but everybody who knows uh-huh. knows. Yep. And in fact, one I of the scenes is Ryan Gosling hitting on the man playing the woman. I appreciated that that was not a huge topic of conversation, though. And that is such a low because bar. And my standards are literally in the ground about that. But I went in. Yeah, that's a, yeah. Oh, I went in cool. expecting because they had made a big deal about hiring that person. I think um, Hari Neff. And I was worried about that. And that was the one thing that I had planned, like braced myself for. And it was a pleasant surprise that it just kind of. Nobody acknowledged it. Just like with the body positive Barbie, it wasn't acknowledged. I was like, okay, at least you're giving audiences that, that we just moved on from it. And it wasn't a huge topic. Almost like discussion. the movie wasn't woke. Jesus Christ. Because I feel like in everything we watch these days, gender identity is a huge portion of the conversation. Oh God, the so that was up. at least. A yeah. Point like, like, yeah. Like, like I say, again, I think that the end of the film sort of rebuts the. Uh, the casting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the end of the film is Barbie becomes a woman by going to the gynecologist. Oh so, yep. Yeah, that's that's kind of awkward. Okay, well, that's we can so agree reductive. to disagree on on Barbie. The things I think we agree on, good production design. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we agree that Ryan Gosling is, is the funniest thing in the film. Yes, absolutely. Um, and I think that we agree that there are serious political problems inside the film. You are just willing to overlook those because <laughs> you're much younger than I am. And, uh, and also because mm-hmm. you are a representative of the young female perspective. Exactly. Whereas I'm older and wiser and thus can see the threat to American culture like and morality that exists in movies seen by millions Idiot. of people preaching feminist it's garbage. Like okay. And Brett, you don't love Greta Gerwig. As always. <laughs> That's true. I do not love Greta Gerwig. Ugh. It's always great to talk to you. Just put him down. End our suffering and misery. <laughs>